Hello everyone. You're through to St Mark's Online. Greetings in Jesus' name. This video uploaded for Sunday the 6th of October, AD 2024. I'm Jonathan Fraze. Thank you for joining me. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away transgression, to rule in equity. He comes with succour speedy to those who suffer wrong, to help the poor and needy, and bid the weak be strong, to give them songs for sighing, their darkness turn to light, to souls condemned and dying were precious in his sight. Well, knowing of our value in his hands, we pray, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy on us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who repent, as you have promised, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and disciplined life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the 19th after Trinity. Lord God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in everything direct and rule our hearts, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 78. The last three verses. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep he brought him to be the shepherd of his people Jacob, of Israel his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart and skillful hands. He led them. Thanks be to God. The reading is 1 Samuel 16. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, 
not has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down till he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, now and always, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Tomorrow is the first anniversary of the massacre by Hamas last year, the largest slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust. The terrorists attacked on Jewish New Year, Yom Kippur. Israel is the size of Wales, with Arab nations together over a hundred times larger. Why the strife? Partly this is because of the history of the land. Today we begin a series on the life of David, the greatest leader of ancient Israel. His appointment to leadership is a matter of the heart. As we heard read, Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The setting is a coronation. The ceremonial, I agree, is minimal, but the enthronement, yes, it's delayed by years and years. Yet David's ascent is inevitable, just as is the final victory of Christ, great David's greater son. In the history of Israel, we pick up the story just after King Saul not to be confused with Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle of Christ, then changing to Paul. No, this Saul, this King Saul, learns he has lost God's favour. Saul had not waited for Samuel to arrive at a meeting, and so God's spokesman tells him that instead the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. That's in chapter 13, verse 14. Saul had lacked the necessary spiritual convictions. King Saul then disobeys the Lord by not destroying the evil Amalekites as God wanted. Ironically, Saul was trying to please the Lord by holding back some plunder for sacrifice. But that's not what God had specified. Samuel tells him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today. And... This is God resolving that he cannot overlook such persistent failure. God says of himself he is not a man, that he should change his mind. That's 15 verse 29. The prophecy, of course, is fulfilled, despite attempts by Saul to stop it. And Christians now, will they do their own putting to death? Don't they? Colossians 3 verse 5. We are to put to death evil in our lives. The narrative now falls into four parts. One, Samuel's fear. Samuel laments Saul's downfall. He's not one to rejoice over the failure of others, and that's a good quality. But God has plans, and the plans are for a new leader. He instructs Samuel to be kingmaker, to take anointing fluid carried in the curled spike from a ram's head, so fill your whole horn with oil. Off to Jesse of Bethlehem you go. The idea worries the prophet. He knows that rulers dislike rivals and their supporters. Uh, Saul won't like this, he says. So God allows Samuel to call his visit a domestic event. Take a heifer and say, look, it's a sacrifice to the Lord. Well, the offering of a young cow was a way of penitence, of focusing prayers wherever a high priest would go. But that animal bloodletting ceased with the cross of Christ, the final shedding of blood. And Christ, the King of Kings, 
visited by kings or magi when he himself was born in Bethlehem, also had a threat. But God protected him with refuge in Egypt until it was safe to return. Samuel's fear calmed by God. To the elders' concern. Do you come in peace, they inquire, wondering whether the last of the judges will fall out with them, just as he had recently fallen out with the king. Samuel is not here for trouble, and the descendant of the man he anoints will, of course, be called Prince of Peace, that term for Christ prophesied in Isaiah 9, verse 6. Christ himself making peace with God and man at the cross. That's why Paul writes, he is our peace in Ephesians 2. Samuel says in our narrative, come to the sacrifice. And we don't say the same as we point people to the cross. Whatever your thoughtful concerns, come to the sacrifice. A millennium later, blind Bartimaeus shouts to Christ from the roadside, son of David, have mercy on me. That's telling, isn't it? Son of David, I want to see. Well, Jesus cured his blindness. Read it in Mark 10. And our blindness is spiritual, isn't it? That's the great concern. Three, Jesse's surprise. Let's care for mum and dad so you can focus on what really matters, says a radio advert for a care company. But in godly culture, we can't separate these things. Because what matters is relationships, not other things. It's such a sad thing the more I think about that slogan. Well, Jesse parades his boys before Samuel, who finds the first outwardly impressive. Surely the Lord's anointed is here. Well, you see, Samuel is still thinking of the appointment of Saul in chapter 9, verse 2, who was a head taller than all the others. Well, seven sons are viewed, but none are chosen. Samuel discovers an eighth, the youngest, and he's called in. Salvation history has often favoured younger brothers, with Abel more godly than Cain, Isaac preferred to Ishmael, and Jacob over Esau, and Joseph over ten older brothers. In this narrative, God calls into service another ignored soul, another one well down the pecking order. Jesus himself of David's line will be raised in Nazareth and have no formal rabbinical training. Yet as he taught about the kingdom of heaven and invited them to step in, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. It's still true today. We must just bring it to people's knowledge and attention. The surprise, God's hand in history, and that all roads lead to Christ. Wherever you start in scripture, you end with him. So four, final quarter of the final section of the narrative today is David's anointing. David had been tending the sheep, but the feast will not begin without him. Christ, our good shepherd, calls us his own sheep by name, John 10, and he will make sure we get there too. David had handsome features, we read, along with his heart for God, just as Solomon gained wisdom and wealth, so he had a double blessing. But Jesus had no beauty or majesty, Isaiah 53, 2. So appearance is irrelevant to salvation. It's not the issue with the Saviour. It's not the issue with us. God tells Samuel to anoint David, and he does so. Anointed gives us the Hebrew word Messiah and the Greek word Christ. From that day the Spirit came on David in power. And although becoming court musician and then accomplished general victorious in battle, he would face many trials. His brothers mock him as wicked of heart, 17 verse 28. And while hunted by Saul, the wilderness will be the place, not of God's absence, but of God's presence. Years of character development coming up. This spirit had already come upon Samson for his battles over the Philistines and then Saul himself, so David had to use God's blessing better than either of them. 
Looking ahead, prophecy declares, this is Isaiah 11, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, upon whom the Spirit of the Lord will rest. And as we see at Jesus' baptism, launching his public ministry, the Spirit of God comes down and rests upon him. Monarchs are still anointed in Britain, and we pray that each one has a heart for God. Anointing can also be used with prayer for the sick, again a symbol of our desire for the work of the Holy Spirit. So what does this mean for us, this story of the selection and anointing of David? I return to verse 7 and find two applications. First, look past, but not down on, outward presentation. Give time for hearts to be revealed, but do not be mesmerised by appearance or height, by wealth or charm, by contacts or skills. It's so important that we learn this. Second, look for the heart. Watch your attitudes. Encourage good heart attitudes in others. In missionary preaching in Acts 13.22, Paul says that God told Samuel, yes, he, he taught the whole scripture. I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Will you? A humble heart will always meet with God, wherever we live, whatever the trials. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this story of the selection of David. And we bring our own hearts before you, asking that you purify them and keep them close to the Saviour. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for the Church. We pray for the Church of England and her bishops, that you would anoint them with courage to stand by truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our protector, be a shield of defence for those who stand for you in hostile territory. And that increasingly means so much of the Western world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Prince of Peace, have mercy of those who live in war zones, Israel, Lebanon, Ukraine, Sudan and more. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the country of Iran and its love of exporting violence, that you would give it a complete change of heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, bless and guide Charles, our King, his royal family, Prime Minister and Government, and watch over all who teach, all who learn, and all who settle into new schools. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our community, parish and town. Remember Bexhill Food Bank, Ukrainian guests among us. Pray, Lord God, for St Mark's, for growth in a good heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, please send your healing mercies on the sick and the carers, particularly lifting John Philpot to you. God of all consolation, we thank you for those who have kept the faith to the end, giving you thanks for the life of Liz Wilkins, 
Now we thank you for carrying a suda last week on the shoulders of the Good Shepherd and dedicate ourselves to daily worship in life and limb. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin, nor run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us at all times to do what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. King shall fall down before him, and gold and incense bring. All nations shall adore him, his praise all people sing. To him shall prayer unceasing and daily vows ascend, his kingdom still increasing, a kingdom without end. Over every foe victorious, he on his throne shall rest, from age to age more glorious. All blessing and all blessed, the tide of time, shall never his covenant remove. His name shall stand for ever, the changeless name of love. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for remaining in contact with St Mark.